for everybody here. So, um, hi, thanks for coming. Um, we are this evening doing the beautiful drippy uh, wine cooler. Now, I don't drink wine, so for me, this is going to be a new vase because it's just a really, really nice shape and it holds flowers beautifully. Um, it's also really, really good. It was pointed out for like kitchen utensils and things like that. So there is this is a multiple use um, piece of pottery. But this is what we're aiming for this evening. So let me spin it around. So we've got um, a bit of rainbow colour going on, some drips, which are really fun. And I feel like everything needs to have some sort of drippy glaze on it. But also we're going to have... Um, have some fun doing some freehand painting. Now, when I say freehand, I don't want anybody to panic because it's freehand with a little bit of guidance. So we're going to transfer the image and then we're going to use our fine paintbrushes to get some lettering on. We're also going to use a little bit of wax resist because we don't want our lovely um, drippy rain to come across our nice work that we've done down here. So there's a lot going on in this project, but it's really, really fun. So the idea is we'll all paint relatively at the same time. So before I um, kind of jump onto the new or the next stage, then I'll make sure that everyone has caught up and everybody's happy. Now, um, I will be painting along with you. Pip is there to kind of keep a bit of an eye on everybody. So um, she's going to be sort of watching. She'll spotlight people. Um, obviously, she's filming me doing all the talking, um, but there'll be the occasional time where you guys, if you want anything, just wave at her or, or you've got the chat button at the bottom if you've turned your microphones off, um, anything like that. So don't feel like you're kind of stuck and on your own if I've either sped past something or missed something off. So I think everyone has painted before. Let me just check actually for risk of spotlighting you. Um, Holly's mum, have you painted pottery before? No. No. Okay, that's fine. So um, you're going to be absolutely fine. Um, we're going to chat through things, but just make sure that if I've jumped ahead or if I have said something that doesn't quite make sense, please do just say, because um, I know a lot of people here have painted with this before. So um, when I talk about kind of fully loaded fan brushes and stuff like that, I'll, I'll try and remember to, to remind everybody what that means and, and where we're going. But this is a really great project to get you started on because you can't really go wrong so it's just a matter of having fun and and enjoying yourself as we go all right so we're just going to go through kits because i packed them all so hopefully you've got everything in there but i just want to double check so obviously you've got your bisque wine cooler you should have two paint brushes a fan brush and then a thinner white tipped brush you should have paper with the um the template on it and then you should have a pot like this of black glaze, a pot like this that says FN001, which is a white glaze. And then you should have seven little pots with black lids that have colourful glaze in. So each one is different. Those are all your rainbow colours. And then your eighth pot with a black lid should have a um, metallic sticker on the top. This one here is your wax resist. So at the moment, we're not going to use this one. Um, we did use wax resist in the cobblestone workshop, but for those of you that haven't used it, wax resist resists glaze from pottery. So you don't want to accidentally paint this all over your wine cooler because nothing will then go on it. So it's very, very good at doing its job. So we'll bring this in a little bit later, but um, while you're painting, just keep the one with the lid on tucked out of the way for now. Um, what I've also got on my desk is a bowl of water just to wash my brushes out and add water to glazes later and I've got a biro because we're going to need to um, emboss our image into glaze. So hopefully if you've all got that set that'll be great and we can get started. So the first thing we're going to do um, is set your wine cooler down on the table in front of you and um, have it laying down if that's easy. Um, however works best and then we're going to go with the FN001 so this is a foundation glaze and it's white so the bisque that we are painting on actually fires really white as it is so you don't need to paint the whole thing but what we're going to do to make it nice and easy to transfer our brolly and our little inspirational quote we are going to paint a third of the wine cooler from top to bottom in two coats of white glaze so we're going to paint the white glaze on, we're going to let it dry so it needs to lose its shine completely 
and then we will paint it again. So this is what we're aiming for. If Pip can swap to the phone view, please, Pip, if that's all right, and then you guys will be able to look up and see what I'm doing at the same time. So when we talk about fully loading our glaze, everything's washable, so if you accidentally get it on you, um, it'll come off in the machine. But we're going to dip into our water here. We're going to add a brush full of water to our glaze. So in that goes, and we're just gonna mix that up nicely. Just gonna mix it all in. And then we're going to fully load our brush. Now, when I talk about it being fully loaded, it means that I'd like all of the bristles to be holding on the glaze. So while it's running off the end, you wouldn't be able to paint with it. But you just wanna make sure that it is holding as much glaze as it possibly can. It needs to be kind of saturated. And then we're just going to do these lovely long brush strokes up and down this third of the wine cooler. Now you don't want to go over the same spot multiple times because you're adding three, four, five coats of glaze. But you'll see as you work your way up that there is a ridge at the top and a lot of glaze will pull. You do just need to pull that back just a little bit off of there. And then let that coat dry. So once you've done that one coat, you can let that dry and we'll add a second one. Um, seeing how quickly mine is drying into here is very different to when I did this one in the studio. So I may get you guys to go for a third coat on this one. We'll do three coats of white. Um, you'll notice that the first coat dries really quickly. So as soon as it's lost its shine, you're good to go again. You don't need to add water every time. It was just water on the brush for the first time. And then that's already kind of um, mixed that uh, foundation glaze up to the right consistency. And then um, you'll be good to go again. So you don't need to add water the second time. So when you go on with your second coat, you'll find that it covers really nicely. It kind of gives this nice silky finish. It covers really well. Um, it's nice and even. You're gonna work your way up and down the wine cooler so you get this good even finish. Don't worry too much about brush strokes. One of the blessings with foundation glaze is when it's fired, um, it fires out the brush strokes really, really easily. You don't need to worry about it looking too perfect. Just make sure it's not pulling too much um, on the rim at the top page to make sure that that's covered. The reason why we don't like it to do that is because these will actually be dip glazed as well. Um, when we add a dipping glaze, it makes sure that the inside is shiny and usable. The whole thing then becomes a shiny, usable piece. Because we're adding another layer of glaze over at the end, we don't want too much glaze all kind of pooling under there because we'll end up with something called um, crawling or shivering. So shivering is where the glaze comes off completely in sheets once it's been fired. Um, and crawling is where it just kind of pulls away from itself when it's, when it's fired. So you'll have these little patches that have really thick glaze around the edge, but you can see exposed bisque underneath because um, the glaze is all just pulled away. We just need to make sure we don't have lots that are pulled in one area. Mine's still quite shiny, so I can wait for my third coat now. Sat here waiting for paint to dry. <laughs> it's about a third of the wine cooler we're painting like this. Yes, yes. A third of the way around, yeah. Purely because your brolly is actually quite wide. So you're just going to make sure that you've got enough there for your umbrella to sit over the top. So you can always kind of lift up your sheet and just make sure you've gone to each side <laughs> of that. Jack, I've gone far. <laughs> My third coat is going on now, but don't panic if you guys aren't at that stage. Yet. 
I do try and speed mine through a little bit more, just so I'm always one step ahead so I can help out if it needs to be. Are you still at home, Georgia? Hmm? Are you still at home? Yeah, I'm home for the weekend, going back on Thursday. Excellent. To, so home for all this weekend and then back next Thursday? Uh, no, I go in Tuesday, Tuesday. Like two days. Two days. Um, I need to reply to your text about walking, but I think we're, we're probably not sure because we've got um, Charlotte's 11 bus coming up, so she's really oh twitching God, yeah. <laughs> everybody in case it throws her into isolation. That it's yeah. Do it, Pip? What date does she do it? Uh, it's not this weekend, it's the following weekend. So, yeah, well, I think after that would be fine. They've got, like, they're all sorted, but if any of the kids are isolating, for them to do it in a different way. Yeah. Um, but I think... <laughs> if it's that the whole school bubble is isolating, then there'll be a lot of them doing it together that she knows. On a different day, yeah. Weird set. So, uh, yeah, we're a bit enclosed at the moment. <laughs> Is it nice being home, or are you missing college? Uh, it, it's nice. But I am missing it. Um, That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's nice to take a break from being like, oh, this class test is positive, this class test is positive, but I do miss like having the social aspect. So I'm quite looking forward to going back. Good. It would be trickier if you were not looking forward to going back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, although it sounds like um, we may be doing our own techniques workshop in, in our flat because they're like, does everyone want any pottery? The entire flat wants warbles, so ah, oh, fantastic. We'll keep you in business so, at least. For those, for those of you who don't know, Georgia works with us, and she went off to Newcastle University a few weeks ago, and is home for a weekend. So before we go on to the next stage, we just need to make sure that your third coat is completely dry. Um, we wouldn't leave this, for instance, overnight before we then do the next phase. It needs to be dry enough so that the glaze doesn't all come off, but um, sort of damp enough that you can emboss into it. So what we're going to do, and I'm just using my paper as a bit of a fan to help speed mine up, um, I just want the shine to go. So um, you can, base coat uh, pieces of pottery with white foundations and leave them for months and months and months and then add your design over the top if you wanted to. Um, but for this particular project and the way we're going to get this design on there, you would need to have it um, at least a little bit damp, not just um, kind of bone dry foundation glaze. But we do need to make sure that there's no shiny bits. So we are just going to wait for a moment um, and watch it dry, I'm afraid. Have you got your fire on, Christina? Sorry, I was muted. Um, no, I haven't. It's actually not that cold. It's just been really, really wet. But I did have it lit the other day 
because I got cold to the bone and I figure if it's getting that cold, then I can have it lit. But actually it's too hot in here. So <laughs> these workshops are going to be completely out of sync when Christina lights her fire because they've done this amazing building and extension work and insulated their house so that it's sealed and completely insulated and never needs any heating but then put an amazing wood burning stove in so in fact she just turns it into a <laughs> it's gonna be really really hot in the comments you'll, you'll be painting and people will be like my glaze isn't drying that quickly and you won't even be able to get yours on <laughs> i've finished <laughs> okay so my shine has gone now don't panic if yours hasn't um, if you've got scissors to hand you scissors, but I tend to just rip the edge of this because for me, bending an apple sheet of paper around a, um, a curved surface is just a bit of a pain. So I'm just going to very roughly tear around the edge. Uh, which camera are we on? This one. So I'm just going to tear around the edge of my image. Now you'll see on your image that they are two separate things. Um, you, we've got the brolly that's on its own and then the, the quote that comes in. But when I did the um, original one, I put my brolly on and then I got my quote kind of coming in across and then planting the rain underneath. Now it's entirely up to you how you guys want to position this. I can leave that next to you if you wanted to copy that one. Um, but what we're going to do is lay our paper over the top of our wide foundation glaze wherever you're wanting it to go, bearing in mind you want your quote to have enough space, but you also want enough room at the top to add some drip. Um, so you've got some drips coming down on your brolly. So this bit is just a bit kind of artist choice. This is where they'll all be ever so slightly different. If you wanted to write something different on it, I won't be offended. So don't worry about um, you know, um, not copying uh, my design. Stop it, because you can be seen. <laughs> I've got a child here, sorry. Um, don't worry about not copying my design exactly. If you want to do something different, then you're very, very welcome to. But what we're going to do is we're going to get our pens, we'll hold your paper in place, and then you're just going to draw around the edge of your image quite firmly. You don't want to bit the paper, but you want to push firmly enough that when you lift it up, it will have embossed that shape into the glaze that's underneath. So I will just go around my brolly and then I'll be able to show you guys. You'll be able to feel it when it's the glaze underneath here. Ooh, I'll work around your design. And when I take that off, you'll see there that that's embossed really nicely into that glaze. So that's the kind of thing that you're aiming for. Now, once that's in place, you can either um, cut off the brolly off of your paper and just work with your quote. We'll just kind of jiggle around a bit, see where your quote's best, where you'd like it to go. Um, as long as it's on this white bit, ideally underneath the brolly, because the idea is the brolly is stopping the rain hitting the quote. So you want to kind of get it positioned under this section here, but you can get that transferred as well, and then we'll start with our painting on that section. Does that all make sense? Yeah. Yeah, mine's still not dry enough though, so I've just tried it. Don't worry, don't worry if you're having to wait for paint, no problem. You do the same with your um, writing, just push nice and hard on there because actually it will be helpful for you when you start um, painting with your fine paintbrush. So the more you push down there, the more kind of embossed that is, the easier it will be to paint with the tip of your paintbrush in a little while. The in and the the is really small. Um, 
just try your best to get it on, but you'll be able to make it work when you paint over the top. So don't be disheartened with how tiny that gets. What I'm doing is just um, lifting up and just positioning, seeing if it's going to fit, seeing where it lies, and then, then go for it with my, with my main quote. Um, I like the way, I personally like the way life, word life, is um, thicker letters. So I'm actually drawing those as if they're bubble letters. So I'm going around the outside of the whole letter um, rather than just kind of doing one thin line. So just bear that in mind when you're going around it, unless you're really good at this kind of lettering with your own freehand. Um, it's worth just using that as like a, a bubble letter. As I say, if anyone is particularly good at painting fonts with freehand, you're very welcome to do your own thing in this bit. Do take your time um, with this bit because it will possibly make your hand ache. Um, so just, yeah, just go with the flow a little bit, but give yourself a break as long as you can keep your left hand on the piece of paper so it doesn't move. Um, just keep working your way through. Very quiet. Lots of concentrating, I think. Phew. <laughs> I just saw that relief across your face. <laughs> it's on. <laughs> Nobody's passed out from holding their breath. That's good. <laughs> I'm not sure what I do because you're all like far away. <laughs> We're like, oh no, they've hit the deck. <laughs> and 
gonna, I'm gonna chat to you about the best way I found using these paintbrushes. Now, when we used to do workshops um, back in the day, um, in the studio, we had access to a lot more kit. So we had our writer bottles, we had our really fine liner brushes and everything else. And obviously while we're doing this, as much as I want to give you as much as you possibly can have at home, um, there's, a, there's a limit to how many brushes I can kind of send out and everything else because you guys will have a million brushes and not, you know, not necessarily use them for other projects. So, however, these little brushes that we have been ordering in for our takeaway kits are lovely. They're major brushes and they're really, really nice because they come out in this beautiful, nice, fine point. And for doing any kind of fine work, you could use the biggest brush you can find. As long as there is a point to it, you'll get something really fine and beautiful. It's just a matter of practicing and using that brush to its potential, basically. We're very quick to pick up a brush and, and paint with it, you know, backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards, and, and we paint and then that's it. But actually you can use these almost like um, a kind of fountain pen, like a quill where it will pull the ink up or pull the glaze up and then dispense it nicely in these lovely fine lines. Now, I would recommend you practice with your paintbrush on your, um, like the hood of the brolly because you can do your beautiful fine lines and mess around in that gap because you're going to cover it in black. Now, nothing shows through black. So if you've done some lines with black and you want to cover it up with more black, it will all disappear. The idea is we're painting the umbrella three times to make it a really nice solid black. The writing we're going to do once, so don't panic that you've got to go over these teeny tiny letters three times. Um, but do just have a practice. So the black is in your bigger pot here. Now, I tend to have that open so that I can add a little bit of water sometimes to my glaze. So I will scoop some out and I'll pop it on the lid. And then it means that as I'm working my way through, I can add some water to it and make sure that that's moving really nicely. Now, I'll try and show you on here. Actually, I can do it on this. Can we go back to the other view, please? So you can see my um, image transferred nicely. I've got my um, my brush here is fully loaded, so it's got the black glaze all the way in there. And then, so if I go flat down against the pottery, I'm going to get thick lines like this. But if I go at 90 degrees, so literally just with the tip of it, I can get really lovely fine lines. Now, depending on how hard I press, they will be finer, and then you can work your way through and get used to that. So you're wanting to get these beautiful fine lines. Now, with the um, indentations that you've made, your glaze will automatically want to fall into there. So use that to your advantage as well. So as you're coming around the edge, use the edge of your paintbrush. So you'll see on here, I'll touch it down and then I kind of pull along, but the paintbrush is doing the work for me. I'm not really doing anything to this glaze. I'm just letting it come off of the paintbrush as the paintbrush glides along that groove. So we're just going to have some fun painting that bit in, but do practice a lot with how fine you can get those lines. Now, Pip is the fine line genius, actually, when it comes to um, painting like this. <laughs> she is really, really good at it. It's taken me a long time. I hold my paintbrush really weirdly. Um, I tend to kind of have it in a fist. So it's learning to do that delicately, but obviously don't copy the way I'm holding it. I think those of us who hold a paintbrush more normally more delicately probably more delicately probably have a little bit more dexterity <laughs> yes. so i hold it like a fist and um but i'm getting there i'm getting better at doing these lovely fine lines it's just a matter of kind of imagining almost ignore the rest of your paintbrush and just keep an eye on the tip at the end because that's the bit that's going to give you those lovely lovely fine lines and and, way around. and having it so that, that your glaze is watery enough that it it will, will flow off because if your glaze starts to dry on your paintbrush, then it clogs up and it gives you kind of lumpy bits at the end. How much water am I adding, sorry? So I scooped out um, some glaze on the lid there. Yeah. Um, a little bit clumpy. So I just put my paintbrush in the water and I just kind of mixed around so it makes it move off of the paintbrush nicely. So rather than, it's, rather than it being like paint, if you turn it into a consistency that's a little bit more like a kind of a thick Indian ink, then you'll find it will run off of your paintbrush nicely. Okay. 
Now, doing it this way does mean that the finished piece, your handle of your um, brolly and the brolly itself will be a really thick, solid black. Um, the word life will be the same and then the rest will be a kind of a brush strokey version, basically. So we're going to have a brush stroked version of the um, glaze. But actually, it was all part of it. It's all part of kind of practicing with this. If I got you to go over it three times, you would um, probably cut yourself off of the Zoom call and give up. Um, it would also just end up making a really big mess because when you're painting with a paintbrush and you're doing really, really fine work, you need to love the fact that it is more of a kind of textured, watered down finish um, because it's very, very hard to go over the same the same lines three times to get that really strong, intense colour. What I like about this as well is I can go backwards and forwards. So I can do a little bit of the fine lining and then I can slap some paint on, which is really nice. It kind of breaks it up a bit rather than having to concentrate all the time. When you feel ready to, by all means, you can start doing some of your letters. Have a little play, see how you feel. Get this glaze so that it's watery. So when you touch onto that groove, it, it kind of wants to fill the channel in. It's not, you're not necessarily painting it on. You're just allowing the glaze to run off of your paintbrush and into the channels that you've made for each letter. But without too big a blob of glaze because you'll end up with a big drip. So yes. make, make sure that it's all held nicely in your paintbrush. Kim, are you okay? Are you just concentrating or are you panicking? Concentrating. <laughs> so when I ask you things, I'm not singling anybody out and I'm not bullying you. But I just I'm so just thinking I'll be here. I think I'm gonna be here till tomorrow. That's okay. Take take your time because the the rest of it is very fun, slappy on. So you're going to be paying lots of attention and you're all going to be concentrating. And then, and then it's just fun with the drips and a bit of splattering and things. So, um, awesome. this is very much the concentrated bit, and then, and then you can just let your inner toddler out a little bit. This is the bit that Natalie will like. <laughs> yes. And then we'll all enjoy the the bit later on. Well, Georgia looks pretty pretty content as well in her little world of of relaxing. Yeah, you know, I think it's just getting used to the fact as well that a paintbrush is more than just the glaze on there and um you can watch some really amazing artists doing some really delicate painting um with huge paintbrushes things that you just couldn't imagine that they can get that kind of brush stroke out of them um and it's it's really interesting so obviously we're not going that extreme now but it is worth just kind of knowing that you can do a lot more with a paintbrush than really really thick lines but when we're open again and then you pick up a paintbrush and go oh it's a size six brush and I used that before and I can do it just have a look at how that paintbrush comes together because in the studio a lot of our paintbrushes get a bit a bit destroyed so I have a few paintbrushes that I save for fine line work and I don't do general big big stuff painting with them because it keeps them coming together much more nicely um, and generally in the studio, we, we have a few new brushes hanging around that you can always ask for. Yeah. When we're back, or we'll all bring in our own. Or you'll be bringing your own. And that, oh, my goodness, that's like a whole nother, I didn't even think about that. We're going to have all our regular painters with their own sets of brushes and you'll be coming in. Yeah, you need to start making some of those lovely brush holders again. <gasps> you could do that. Thanks for keeping us going through COVID. Here's a brush holder. <laughs> Christmas presents. <laughs> um, yeah. I love thinking about when everybody will be back in again and then sometimes it just all feels far too weird and <laughs> distanced from where we are. One day. One day. We're going to have the biggest party. Pottery party. Or not, we might all just be a bit too scared. <laughs> <laughs> no, it'll all be good. We'll like even be sharing each other's drinks just because we can. Wow. No, no, that might still be too far. <laughs> yeah, okay, maybe not. <laughs> you can come into that party. <laughs> you, you work in a primary school, there's no way I'm sharing your drink. <laughs> Yours not <neither>, Helen. <laughs> Those kids are gross all the time. <laughs> yeah, they are. They're you know, they pick their noses and things. There's nothing you can do about it. 
<laughs> yeah, okay, maybe we won't go that far. So um, if you've done your first coat and it looks a little bit like mine, all a bit messy and a bit wishy-washy and brush strokey, don't worry because we've played with kind of watering it down a bit. Um, it will go thicker the more and, and more kind of solid, I suppose, the more layers that you put on. So um, don't worry about it looking a little bit messy. Now, while that first layer is drying, I'm going to work my way down the um, handle of the brolly. Now, on the um, example piece I did, I actually missed a section out of the handle. So it looks like the quote sits over the top. So if you're wanting to do that, obviously just have a little look at where your quote lies to where that line finishes. Um, if you don't do it, your line will cut through some of your words and it might make it look like you've got sort of T's in words that aren't there or things like that. Just be very aware of, of what bits you're painting. It doesn't matter if you've embossed the whole handle in and then you decide not to paint it because it will all level out in the kiln. So um, just be aware of where that handle's going to go. Um, depending on where you put your quote, you might find it's not anywhere near it anyway, but just um, keep that bit in mind. And now I would recommend starting painting your words as and when you're happy to. And then when you need a break from that concentration, go back and add your second layer or your third layer onto your umbrella top because it's, it kind of breaks it, it gives you proper painting and then you can go back to it again. Um, you'll notice as well that your paintbrush that you're using doesn't, um, it doesn't hold the moisture very well. So it will start to dry. So after a while, give it a really good wash in your water and then start again, kind of reload it because otherwise it will get claggy and it will be harder to paint with. Does it feel like it's working for everybody getting these fine lines? Does every Anybody have any kind of issues or need any hints or support? Excellent, all good. If you could come and do it, that would probably be neater, but you know. Did you just mute everyone, Pip, when you asked that question? Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. They're all like, oh, no. I didn't, and I got some smiles and some nods from people too. Be good. kind. Be kind. Yeah. There's lots of um, pros to painting over foundation glaze as well, because if something horrendous happens here and it all splodges everywhere or you lose a word or you just want to cry because you think it's all ruined, we've got three coats of glaze. So we can potentially fix any mistakes. We can scrape it back slightly. We can take one layer of that white away with the black on top and it kind of gives you um, a buffer really, gives you a backup. Now you can paint like this directly onto bisque. You can copy an image with carbon paper. You can then use your paintbrush and paint over the top and you can just kind of go straight on. It is then not forgiving. Um, black glaze has got such a strong pigment that if you go straight onto bisque with it, even if you wipe it away, there'll always be that kind of black hue in the background. However, doing it on top of um, this foundation glaze does just give you a little bit of a safety barrier. So. Um, don't panic too much if something goes wrong. Um, Pip and I will be able to help you out as we go. God, it's almost like it was planned that way, Christina, so we didn't have any tantrums. No, it totally was. <laughs> so I didn't have a tantrum painting it in the first place. <laughs> I've painted one word and I'm going back to fill in the top just to give myself a break because I do feel like it's really intense. You say we go over the word life three times as well as the umbrella. If you can, but if it's going to make you um, question life, then don't worry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll bear that in mind. <laughs> Or it might make life not look like life. And that's yeah. the thing. So if you go over it once more and then you start thinking, nah, I'm losing life a bit. And...
I'm going to fix with my little plastic cap that came on my paintbrush. Now, if you don't have that um, for some reason, then a cocktail stick works really, really well. Um, but it's basically just smudged ever so slightly. So I'm just going to really carefully scrape back the black. Um, and then I can mix it up. See? So I just scrape back down through the white a little bit. And then I'll be able to go back and add the rest of my word. Um, as I said before, that white will level out in the kiln. So if you kind of gouged a bit out, don't worry about it because it will, it will level. I'm going to have to go upside down though because the handle to my volley is wet. So um, don't panic if you haven't finished, but I know a few of you have. I'm just adding my final coat to my brolly, and then we've got to make sure that these are dry because in a moment we're going to use the wax resist. And when I uh, mentioned it earlier on, it's, it does exactly what it says on the tin. It, it will, it's wax based and it will resist glaze over the top of it. So what we want to do is create the illusion that this brolly um, is actually doing its job and stopping the rainbow rain from getting onto our quote. So to do that, we're going to use wax resist over the top. It's also one of the reasons why um, we painted the foundation glaze on first, because when you wax resist, it covers the bisque. It gives a clear, um, clean coverage of bisque to stop anything else getting on it. Now, in this case, we want to stop the colourful glaze getting on it, but if um, we haven't put any foundation glaze on there and we just wax resisted onto the uh, bisque. When we fire it, the bisque will come out bisque-like still. So it will, re um, it will resist the clear glaze that we pop over the top. So um, with putting the foundation glaze on there first and we put the three coats on, then we've added our black over the top. There is more than enough glaze on there for this piece to be what we call food safe. It doesn't need to have that, um, that top layer of glaze over the top. So um, we will wait for the black to dry completely. And then as I say, we're going to then paint the wax on. The reason why we let it dry completely is because the wax can pick up um, any base coats of color. And if it does that, and then you sort of merrily spread it around with your paintbrush with the wax, you're then kind of putting that color everywhere. You won't then be able to fix it because the wax will hold it steady. So it's a great product, but it has to be kind of treated with respect because it can easily mess up projects. So um, just give your, when you're done, give your small paintbrush a rinse um, really, really well in your water. You don't want any black left in those bristles because we need to paint the wax on so it goes on completely clear. So just give that a really, really good rinse. And I will wait um, for everyone else to catch up for this bit. Um, but as I say, make sure all of your writing is on and you've done your third coat on your brolly and then we need to sit and make sure these dry completely. Did everybody get on okay with painting the small letters? I'm deciding who I like least to give this as a gift perhaps for Christmas. Oh, no. <laughs> See, I find it gives me a headache because I stop breathing and I hold my body in a really weird shape. Yeah. So I hold it in my hand and then I find I kind of crumple over the top of it as I'm painting. So I feel like now I need to stretch the other way because it's like I've, I've kind of concertinaed one side. Um, your black glaze can have its lid put back on and just pop it over to the side because we'll use that again a bit later. I have to say it doesn't matter whether I copied it and embossed into the paint or not. It's my writing. Now, that is something that Pip and I have known and seen for so many years now. Whenever we used to do um, kind of transfers and things and we'd use a font on the computer and we'd carbon paper it on beautifully with, with our, um, like using the font and then you go with your painting and it ends up looking like your own. There is a real knack and I think it must be quite a rare thing for somebody to be able to truly copy um, another person's writing or go over the top because I think your brain just automatically adds your own style. 
So yeah, these will all look a little bit different. I'm not even sure I'd call it a style. <laughs> Can you read it though? That's what matters. Well, you tell me. Yes. I can read it. It's brilliant. Yeah, lovely. Very well done. Now, if it were a journaling pen, it would have been a lot easier. <laughs> Indeed. Helen, you finished quite quickly. How did yours go on? I think. Lovely. Does the umbrella look thick enough? Like I've done enough layers. I've done three, but. Yeah, it's very, very lovely. Like, okay. Yeah. Oh, it looks brilliant. Very neat. Kerry's run off, hers was so bad. <laughs> That's it, she's escaped. Sorry, changed my water. Oh, good call. Holly, how, in, how are you and your mum getting on? Yeah, good, brilliant. Sorry, we've got a little one in the background and she's noisy, so we have to mute. Don't worry, you saw my little so. one into the screen, so it's all good. <laughs> I, yeah, I think we've done, I, I went a bit rogue and, and I did something different, so sorry. Well, no, I like it. Mum did a bit, so. Yeah. Oh, I love it. <laughs> really lovely. It's nice to go rogue, go for it. I think it's great. <laughs> What these projects are all about really you need to have something that you like at the end of it as well so it's learning the technique but also doing your own thing is definitely okay <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice row of washing behind when i set up i i spent ages in my house thinking okay where looks the tidiest and i thought actually because all it has is a photo and a radiator if you can see the rest of my house, it's quite diabolical, but I've literally put <laughs> myself into this corner so nobody can see it. <laughs> it's all good. It's like Zoom, isn't it? When you look at people's houses in Zoom, you think, oh, I quite like what they've done in the background. <laughs> I like my background because it's really, really messy. <laughs> oh, I get, have you read all those books? Oh, do you? Yeah, no, some of them are my husband's. <laughs> When I did the photo earlier, because I put a photo on our Facebook page of us like, being set up, ready to go, I realised that my iron, so my iron's on the table here, like literally right here, and <laughs> it's in the picture, and I was like, oh, and it wasn't until I posted it. Now, it'll only be if somebody zooms in and looks, but you know when you think, damn, I thought I'd got it. <laughs> I thought I'd cleared everything out the way enough. <laughs> There's always something. At least it's not a pair of pants or anything. We're all good. <laughs> <laughs> you oh, both look behind me. <laughs> <laughs> we'll wait until Pip spotlights you later and we can zoom right in and have a look. <laughs> Not my house. Georgia, <laughs> how's yours gone? Have you copied it all? Over there. I think George has like fallen asleep or something. I'm here. Oh, there we go. <laughs> has yours worked okay? Yeah, yeah, it's good. Perfect. Done. Kim, how are you getting on with yours? Yeah. <laughs> good to show us or not? That's what it's all about. So I can read what it says, yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure anybody else will. <laughs> it is, and like with Kerry, if she really doesn't like it, there's always a back to this and it looks awesome just like that. So we really <laughs> have to just turn it around and then you'll ever know that there's writing on there. So it's Kerry, I would be really insulted by that. <laughs> <laughs> she knows me. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, Natalie? We yeah, I think uh, I think we're all right. I think that's very lovely. Hang Just had to do yeah. some tidying up because you know. Not. <laughs> Bit of tidying up, but I'm happy. It's good. Nice again, good. Then. Yeah, oh, that looks great. Good job. 
I just I had to tidy under the umbrella just a tiny bit but it's okay it's good I'm happy now <laughs> <laughs> okay so when these have completely dried because as I say you don't want to smear black all over the place we're going to get our um, dreaded little pots of wax resist and open them up over on the side now my writing paintbrush is quite small but the fan brush is then quite big however the fan brush is going to be the better option i would say at getting this on depending on how confident you feel with using the edge of the fan brush like this bit here so when you um, use the fan brush i'll show you on the back of my hand you can guide that edge round and it will give you like the perfect kind of curve so it's this edge here and you would paint along and it would give you this perfect curve coming in now, when we put the wax resist on here, we only want to cover the black. So just showing you on here, you'll see how I went right to the edge of the black, which meant that my colours touch the top of the umbrella and then run off. So you want to go only to the edge of the black. If you go over and onto the white, it will be fine. It's not going to ruin it, but you will then have a gap. It will look like it was some sort of magical brolly that um, repels the rain before it actually touches it. So when you're painting your wax resist, you only want to come up to that edge. And then you want to imagine that you've got a dead straight line coming from each side, working your way down. You then do the top of and then paint down one coat of wax resist. Now, when you paint with wax, I know some of you did the cobblestone workshop, it will start to resist itself. So you can't overwork this because you'll mix it into that black and then you'll get smears everywhere. Um, but at the same time, you need to kind of get it covered quite quickly before it starts drying. Because as soon as this sets up against the glaze that it's on, it will then resist itself. So you wouldn't then be able to make your wax like a thicker coating, which is why I said perhaps going for the fan brush is going to be your better option. Now it doesn't fit in the pot. So um, I would recommend kind of splitting it a bit and using one half of the fan brush. Um, or if you've got a plate or something, or even the top of your um, white foundations pot, you can tip your wax resist into there, then you can load your brush on the top there. So um, find a way that works best for you. And then we're just going to cover, as I say, to that top edge of the brolly, and then straight down as if there's like a full section there um, that's kind of working, working down from the point at the edge of your brolly, because then that will encase your quote and keep this completely solid and white. Your phone view, so we can see what you're doing on this bit. Yes, of course. <laughs> I'm slapping, <Sorry>. sorry. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. Blah, blah, blah. So here we are. They're all rolling around mine. They're trying to escape. Put my pen under there. So I'm actually going to use the top of my foundations pot here. I'm going to tip some of that wax out, just being really careful not to get it everywhere else because. If it's on your fingers and you touch the pot, it's then going to resist. Um, and then my brush is clean and dry because you don't want to add lots of water to this. So it's not bone dry. There is still some moisture in there, but it's not, um, we're not loading it like we did before with the water first. So I'm going back to get on my brush. So I'm going to start doing the edges first because the writing is the bit that I'm worried about smearing the most. So I'm just going to touch it down like this and then we'll come down one coat of wax resist. It has missed ever so slightly in the middle. I'm just going to reload that bit. And I'm just going to drag down there and make sure that's completely covered. What I don't want to do now is rework that because this wax resist will rehydrate that black glaze and I don't want it to do that. You have more than enough in your pot to cover this. Just be aware Actually, mine's doing it now. Down here, I've got a bit of a drip and I don't want that to go off the edge, so I'm just going to pull that back. On this side, I'm going to flip my brush and come down like this. So the edge, this outer edge of my brush is the edge of my brolly so that I don't then go all over the place with it. I'm just going to pull that down and then load again and just come down the middle. So that is then my writing completely covered. So you can see as well, when Christina goes over that writing, she's actually quite delicate with that brush. Yeah. You're not pushing down with a lot of pressure on the brush because that makes it more likely that you're going to pick up and smear your black. So you kind of just 
lightly drag the brush along the surface and, and allow the glaze to come up. The wax really wants to come off the brush as well. So it is, um, it's kind of a, a nice product to use in that sense because it wants to come off. Now, I really like using a fan brush to get myself a curve. Um, I'm going to show you how I would do it, but if this fills you with fear, then use your smaller brush. But I've loaded this there with the wax. I'm not so worried about this split that's on the inside because it's going to be on the inside of my brolly. But I'm just going to touch that down on the edge of my brolly and I'm going to work my way around like this. Right on the edge. I'm just going nice and slow because then I've got full control over it because when you're painting with something like this, you do need to slow down to keep that control. I'm going to keep turning around. Following that volley round to join the bit that I painted before. And then I've got this teeny tiny little point at the top here. So I'm just going to get a little bit of glaze, a little bit of wax resist, sorry, onto my brush and cover that point there. Make sure none of it is running because it does want to move and do its own thing. And then that's it. Now, if your black's gone a little bit cloudy, that's fine. It's because it has a wax in there. It's, it will be cloudy now, but it won't be when it's fired. So that's then the kind of finish you're looking for. So you've basically made a little dome over the top of it. Now, you won't be able to rework that now. So once it's on, that's it. You might be able to see here on mine that there are little droplets on top. That's because I retouched the paintbrush with the wax resist on and tried to go over it. But you'll see there, it's resisting itself. It's now dry on there. It's going to resist itself. It's not going to let you add any more. So once that's done, pop your lid back on your wax resist. It will last for a little while if you wanted to do another project, as long as your lid is um, screwed on tightly. Um, you can't really add any water to that, unfortunately, but um, it should last you a good few weeks in there. Um, you need to wash your brush out in soapy water. So don't be tempted to pop it in your water bowl. Um, you need to wash it under warm water with a little bit of fairy liquid or hand soap and it'll break that wax down and that'll be ready to go. Do the same with the top of your pot here, just so you're not covered in wax. And then at the same time while I'm doing it, I'm just gonna change my water over so I've got nice clean water for the drips. So how are you all doing? Have you all got your wax on? Yeah. Wax yeah. on? Yeah. Perfect, so now we're gonna do drips. Now drips are really, really fun. So I love um, making glaze run, basically, and we only have to do one layer on the drips. So normally we talk about this three coats having a really strong, solid coverage, but when you're dripping glaze, it kind of works that it's, it you know changes in the intensity of its color as it works its way down. So, uh, which camera are we on? This one. So you'll see at the top here, it's a little bit paler, and then it comes down into a big solid drip at the bottom. Now, obviously over your brollies, it will then kind of run off and do its thing down the side. But as we're working around the back, you can work with your drips like this. Now I started trying to keep all of my drips separate because I don't like things mixing and doing what they're not supposed to do. However, now it's fired. I quite like that this happened. It reminds me a little bit of rain on a window. You know, like when you watch a droplet and it joins another droplet and then they kind of race their way down. Um, so that was what I went for. I just embraced the fact that they all started making friends. Um, but basically to make glaze run like this, it would work beautifully um, running if it was already on a shiny surface. It will just want to go and do its thing. But we're putting this onto bisque and bisque is really, really porous and it just sucks that moisture straight out of the glaze. So what we're going to do when we run these is we're going to add quite a bit of water to get these moving because otherwise your drips will just stay solid at the top and they're not going to want to go anywhere. Now, I did say earlier that we're going to use our smaller brushes. If you find you're happier with your bigger brush and you can load more in, you'll be able to run the drips much quicker. But I think initially, let's just start with our smaller brushes. And I'm actually going to turn mine around because the easier drips to do are the ones that are dead straight down the back. So practice on that. And then we can have a go at kind of getting them doing what they're supposed to do over the top of your brolly. Now you can guide a drip. So if you have a drip that's doing, where did I have a really wonky one? Like this blue one here, this blue one went down and then for some reason just shot off to the side and I guess it was trying to join the yellow. I could have touched this about here and re kind of directed that drip to keep coming down. But actually I quite like the fact it just did its own, own little thing. But when we come down to these ones here, you might want to direct them to make sure they're going the right way. Because when we're dripping, we're dripping like this. So you're, um, 
your wine cooler is is kind of upright so when it drips here it can go either way across the top here so you might just want to touch your brush down and guide this away but i'll chat to you about that when we start dripping on the back and you'll get a feel for how these drips start to run so basically choose a color any color um any of these seven pots get rid of your wax resist now right out the way so you don't accidentally run that all the way down now these are colors of the rainbow so our glazes do look a little bit different um, before they're fired to afterwards so the red that you've got which is the one that i've opened there looks really really pink but when it's fired it is proper red it's what we call our father christmas red so um, when you're choosing your colors here don't worry i haven't given you mad colors the one that looks a bit kind of gray um, is our lightest purple and then you've got your blue your yellow your green your dark purple and your orange so what I'm going to do, and hopefully you guys can see me there, I'm actually going to, because you can reuse this glaze on other projects, I don't want to add loads of water to this because it means that you'll always have a watered down version. So with my brush, I'm just going to scoop out a load and pop it into the lid. And then I can make a start with that. So we're just going to put that in the lid there. So I've got a splodge. And then I'm going to add two full paintbrushes full of water so i don't know if you can see what i'm doing there i'm just wiping the foot so the water's truly running in and then I give that a really really good mix up now if that's not enough there's no exact science we'll know because it's not going to run so what i'm then doing is mixing it because we've got this little lip here we just need to make sure that we're feeding the drip beyond that lip so it doesn't just come off of there and drop so i would tilt it just slightly You've got your fully loaded paintbrush and we're going to touch down here and we're just going to wipe backwards. You're going to wipe its foot across the top and off your drip goes. Now my drip is quite slow and I want it to go a bit further. So bearing in mind you want it to go straight down. If you're angling it, that's fine, but just keep an eye and make sure that drip's going in the right direction. If you want it to go further, just feed it again at the top. It will always follow its own path. It will follow the same path it was on, but you can feed it and feed it again until it goes as far as you want it to so it's now over to you guys so you can add as many drips as you want to bearing in mind if you don't let them dry a little bit between times they will all mix together and you will have some brown in your rainbow i recommend working your way around with one color leaving that lid starting another one work your way around and then your the first ones will be drier so you can start getting some colors coming in closer together and you'll work your way around now just to show you, I'm going to spin round and go on to my brolly side quickly, just to show you what I mean about guiding it. So I'm going to tilt this and I'm going to add a drip here. I want this to go down to my brolly. Now what I'm going to do is feed that there. Now it should, in theory, touch the brolly and run this way because the wax resist is now going to resist it. There you go. You can see it going. So it's already going on its own. But if it decided to stop or it was doing something I didn't really want it to, I can just touch that drip with the tip of my paintbrush. So if I go sideways, I'm just touching, I'm not even touching the pot, I'm just touching the drip. And then it means that that now, if I rerun, will come down here and start following all the way. It's really hard to show you. If I keep tipping it up, unfortunately, it's then going wonky. Feeding that at the top and see. So you always feed from the top and eventually it will make its way down that track. Now, if I let that dry and then try to feed it again, it's not going to keep running down that track. Christine, that can you move your phone so that it looks down at your pot? Looks down like that? No, from the side. Probably means we see your iron again. But like that. Yeah. So it's not dry and it's all the way down here now. So the more I add here, it just follows its own little track and goes down. I'm actually gonna stop there because that's red. I don't want it to look like there's blood all over the top of my uh, umbrella. So I'm gonna let that one be and do its thing. And then I'm gonna work my way around and add all of my others. Now you'll see on this one here, that my drip here is still wet because it's shiny, but at the top here, that's completely dry. It's finished doing its thing. So if I was then to run a different color right next to it, as long as I guide it and make sure it didn't cross over and touch here, then it would sit as a separate drip. I did have one on here. Here we go. That, let's stand that there. 
can you see the yellow here was wet still when I ran the red and the drip then bled into it. So that's the kind of effect you're going to get if you don't let them dry completely in between time. So um, again, it doesn't ruin it, but it's quite nice to be able to show you what would happen. Um, ones that just kind of come down and then join at the end, you'll get a crossover of color, but this is a true run because that one there was wet. So just bear that in mind as you're working your way around. I quite like this um, swap over of color here as these all come in together. So don't worry too much. And sometimes they will want to meet because there's just not enough space on there to get all of your colors um, completely separate. But yeah, just start start working your way around with your drips. What you can do when you've done them all is overlap another color. So this one here, I didn't have enough red coming in at the front, so I did add this extra red because I felt like it was just, there wasn't enough red in there. Um, so you can always come back and add another color if you missed any out um, as you're going around. That one actually made it all the way to the bottom, <laughs> which is fine, just embrace that one. So if it's not going very far, I've not added enough water, yeah? I'd add a bit more water and then I would just keep feeding it at the top. Yeah. So I, like to, I like to imagine it's almost like single cream. So I'm mixing it to that kind of consistency so to, to tip and to run. You might find you need to do a bit of guidance um, next to the part where your white foundation glaze was because it will want to run along the edge of where your brush strokes were. So that might be the point where you just touch your brush down and bring it back to where you want it to be. Um, or just embrace the fact that they run and they do their own thing. Um, it's, it's your pot and it's entirely up to you. However, if you don't want them going sideways, do just guide it a little bit around that, that part. Pip, can you go back to the um, other camera view, please? When I um, wipe the foot of mine, it goes over the top of the rim. Um, I quite like that finish on there. That's the kind of edging you'll get then if you just empty your paintbrush as you're working your way around. So if you don't like that, work your way up from this edge and come up and away rather than up and back. So you can always clean that off or you could add a black rim at the end. You could do anything like that. So, but just bear that in mind that that will be part of your finish. So have your brush strokes going in to the, the kind of top edge um, if you're wanting that the same finish that, that my one had. The light purple is really, really subtle when it goes on today, um, but it will fire up more purple than it looks now. I want you to think that you're painting with white.
he's working for everybody. Yes, thank you. So once you've added all of your colours, um, you just need to very carefully, because the drips will stay wet for quite a long time, just move it around. So pop your hand on the inside of your wine cooler and just move it around so you can see and make sure that you're happy with the distribution of the colours that you've got. Because obviously bearing in mind when it's fired, they will look very different, but you want to make sure that you've got enough of each colour kind of in each area really, so it doesn't, it's not too heavy on one colour um, more than the others. And um, yeah, basically that's then your drippy bit done. Now, depending on how much glaze you've got in your lids, it's probably not gonna do any harm mixing that back in with the glazes that are in there. Um, if you've got lots and lots of water in your lid, just dry them out a little bit before you put your lids back on. Um, but as I said before, you don't need to refeed your drips three times to make them solid. They're going to be perfect just as they are. And then when everyone has finished that bit, we just need to do the last bit and then the project is finished. Make a proper mess on the last bit. Okay, so I know some of you have got the end of your drips, so I'm just going to talk to you about the last bit. Now, um, you don't have to add this, but I added it to mine. I thought it just added a bit of extra, extra depth to some of that white expanse that's on there. And it is flicking black glaze. So because um, we flick it off of a paintbrush, there is a very high chance it will go in your face, in your mouth, on the computer screen, all over the table, um, everywhere that you don't want it to go initially. And that is quite common. And so spot, spot the fact that this is a techniques workshop in your own homes that we're flicking yeah. black and we've never we've never flicked black in the studio <laughs> <laughs> so it is all completely washable and it's non-toxic so if it ends up in your mouth it tastes disgusting but it's not gonna do you any harm and um, if it goes all over the place it will just wipe up now i'm not um saying that you need to just blindly start flicking glaze all over the place you will know where it's landed um if it didn't quite make it onto your wine cooler now, um, those of you that are only just finishing, you can flick whilst these drips are a bit wet because actually when the black hits the um, slightly wet, colourful glaze, it just kind of spreads out a little bit more. So it gives you a really, really nice finish. Um, if you don't want to add this bit, that's fine. Don't worry about it at all. Um, but I'm just going to show you um, how I would do it. So I'm just going to lift up this camera because I'm going to angle mine on its side so you can see the mess I'm about to make. So I put my hand inside the wine cooler so I have got sort of a bit of control. Now I'm going to use my smaller brush again and I'm going to scoop out some of this black glaze onto the lid and again we want it to leave the brush so I'm just going to add a little bit of water and I'm going to fully load and then I'm going to kind of tap it so it's going to be like this and I'm going to tap 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 like that and hope that it does exactly that. <laughs> Ta -da! It's like I've done it before, look. So my splatters come long ways, so if you want them to go long ways kind of in the opposite direction, just aim your paintbrush slightly differently. Add as many or as few as you want. Don't worry when you get round to the waxed bit, I will show you about that. But you want to come across the top because otherwise it looks like you've truly missed a whole section. And just make sure you've got your splats where you want them to be. And then if you've got any on your wax resist, you can just very gently with a slightly damp finger, just wipe it off. So you, it will just come off of that bit. Um, obviously, the bits on the edge don't wipe because they're just going to smear. Um, and don't be um, confused between the edge of your white glaze, which is that line there. I don't know if you can see it on mine and the edge of your wax, because um, if you start going where the white glaze was, you're just going to smear your black. Um, any bits that didn't get enough on there, by all means, add a little bit more. Um, and then your project is done. If you want to write anything on the bottom because you didn't get enough writing practice um, the first time round, then by all means you can add your name, you can do a message if it's a gift for somebody, 
Um, you can put the date, anything you want to. I will um, map out where these go in the kiln. So um, if they all came back to me tomorrow, you don't need to name them. I will make sure you definitely get your one back um, just because of the way I load the kiln. I know where each one is. But there you have it, the before and after of the there we go. Flatty, drippy, rainbow wine cooler that definitely has a saying on it that works for 2020. Christina, can you put them? Yeah. Just move your finger out of the way a second. Thank you. got a blaze hair in it that's what I was picking at. <laughs> I was just taking a screenshot for the thumbnail for the video. Oh, cool. Thanks.